Good morning. Happy Friday to all of you. Yay, Irma's with me today. Hi, Irma. <laughs> Hello, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. And happy Friday. Happy Friday, indeed. Wow. Um, this has been such an awesome month of speaker spotlights, and we are in for a special segment today where we're going to feature our sponsor. So this is a Sing Your Heart Song Summit Sponsor Spotlight. I am so excited for you watching this to meet Mila Johansson. She wow. is truly a pioneer and she's helping so many writers, authors with their books. And she is going to tell us a little bit more about what she's been up to. Exactly. We love having Mila. I think she's been on every summit since our inception. <laughs> And she's been doing a lot of speaking herself at other summits. And so this time around has um, agreed to become our sponsor. And we'd love to hear from you. So um, where are you watching from? Please say hello. Drop us a note in the comments. Engage with us in the chat here. We'd love to connect with you as well, too. But um, I don't know you, uh, you, Irma, but July is like right around the corner. Yes, I am excited for our summit. It is from the 19th of July through to the 21st. It's going to run all day. We have about 20 speakers and presenters and you are welcome to join us and watch and learn from these pros what they do to engage the audiences and what they do to really live their heart songs. Yes, that is key. So who's excited for the summit? Raise your hand, drop us a thumbs up. Let us know if you're excited yeah. for the summit. <laughs> oh my gosh, like this is officially our countdown, right? So right after 4th of July is gonna be our official countdown. And uh, you know, I've been having so much fun with you and with staff on interviewing all of our amazing presenters. It has been a blast. And just to learn more about our presenters and how they, Think and what makes them tick and why are they doing what they're doing and I advise you and I invite you to listen and watch the spotlights and see what they have been up to as well. Exactly. Awesome. All right. So with that being said, we're going to bring up Mila Johansson, our official sponsor of the Sing Your Heart Song Summit. So here we go. One, two, and three. <laughs> Hi, Mila. Welcome. Hi, Mila. Hi. Hi, Irma. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do for me and all of us and putting on the Heart Song Summit. I'm happy to be here. Um, since you've been with us so long, Mila, you know, can you share with us like how you've seen us grow? <laughs> like as a first time presenter I'm... with us and now as our sponsor, like how do you feel that Summit has evolved? Well, I, I think it is evolving like i've seen a lot of summits i've been speaking on evolve but i think it was good from the beginning i think it was wonderful organized and lovely and i was always honored to be here so you know i mean you keep adding things that's good you're adding new different speakers that's always good to bring in you know different ideas and concepts and information and, and I, I just think that you guys come from the heart and that's the most important thing in the entire world. Absolutely, Mila. And the day we met you was the day our lives became enriched because not only did you show us what writing is all about, but you also helped us and you jumped in when we created an anthology. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for letting me help. I love doing that. If you were at my house right now, except for I'm not at my house right now, I'm I'm at the beach boogie boarding for two weeks, uh, and I'm in someone else's house. But I have this cave of books around me, and it's it's like all the books I've been working on helping people put together. Uh, it's a lot easier than they think. I'm sure you guys found out. I mean, it's a lot of work, but but once you loading the book onto Amazon and and all of that it's not as difficult as people think it's a lot easier there there's uh amazon will walk you right through it you don't even need me really but people do they always want to come to me and and say well how do we do this what do we click that and there's some advantages there's a lot of tricks like for example 
you all got samples, right? Of the books before you printed the book officially and put it up for sale, right? And that was such a great idea too, um, that we could go through the proof, the galley copy, I suppose, and like make our edits and actually read and hold it. Like that was our first like evidence <laughs> that we had a book. I think I think that's almost one of the best attributes of Amazon. You, uh, for my for my grandmother's book from Calgary to Congress, we had put 94 pictures in there, and that that made it a little more tricky and difficult, you know, with the little under sentences and everything, the captions. And so what we did was we had to get eight samples before it was perfect. It, it's never going to be perfect. Now remember that, no matter how many times you publish your book, there's still going to be mistakes. So you have to forgive yourself. Even some of the most famous books in the world still have some faux pas and little edits that need to be made but the th great thing is we get to look at our books first when I did my dog book afterwards I had to do a, a book about my dogs how to train dogs afterwards because my grandmother's book was so heavy and 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 hard to do that I had to do a fluffy book and that book only took one sample and then and then you get the samples for a super low price like that book was 235 a book for samples my grandmother's which was 300 pages a lot bigger was 435 and then they let me buy all the books i want up to 999 i think that i can carry around in my car when i speak at book clubs and i speak in person because here's a great sales um hint when you speak in person Every single person there will buy your book. It's actually like a big punch in book sales, even though you're going to sell a lot on Amazon as well. So you that that's another attribute of Amazon. And they give you an author page. And when you do an anthology, like I'm doing the anthology, the Cinderella monologues right now, and still looking for women for that. And that one, um, I'm going to ask every single person to go on Amazon and make their, their author account. You can make your author account way before you publish. Like it's almost good to even do it a year before. Like, and it's the same password as your Amazon account. So these are just some really fun attributes and hints for everybody to participate in. Mila, you also contributed to this anthology. Yeah. Why did you want to put something in the book as well as help us with getting it published on Amazon? What made you want to write something in the book? Well, I absolutely loved the I I loved the concept that we're gonna write dear money, dear abundance, dear tragedy, dear whatever it was. And I wanted to participate in that and also you know, I'm in about, right now about five anthologies and I encourage everyone to be in as many as you can, you know, maybe avoid the ones with the big prices because there's a lot of those and that will um, empty your bank account quickly. But go ahead and do all the ones that are offered to you for free or very reasonable because it gets your name out. It gets your idea out. People will know who you are. And it's a great thing for coaches and uh, entrepreneurs to be in anthologies and guess what here's the best advantage it's a great way to become published immediately instant author and you don't have to do the work the other people do all the work I love that so of course I'm doing all the work for the Cinderella monologues with my team but I I actually enjoy doing all that work but the great thing about being in an anthology is the other people do all the work so when people were in ours, um, Sing Your Heart Song, we did all the work, right, guys? It was a lot of work. But look how many people contributed to it. Fantastic. And then you get your picture on the cover. And then you can say you're an author, and you can often say you're a best-selling author. This book became a bestseller immediately because we picked the right categories. <laughs> categories are everything. Oh, there I am. <laughs> there you are. I want to read your first paragraph and just to entice the viewers about what it is, how simple it is to start writing. And you wrote to abundance in this chapter, Mila, and you say, dear abundance, we have always been friends. 
sometimes I didn't recognize you and I feel that I got to know you slowly. You were always there in your secret ways. Now, if you want to know more, you have to get the book. <laughs> Buy the book. You know, I talk to a lot of people and I tell them about the book and the anthology and what we did, and they love the idea. I think you guys could keep going with putting those out and with the same concept. Don't even change it because there's so many more people who have letters to so many other subjects. And see, there I am giving you advice, teaching you right now. That's that I can't help it. I have so many ideas. I'm like a little yeah. machine. <laughs> I, I have talked to so many people about this book that said, I want, I want to write a letter in that book. I love that idea. I'm going to go buy that book. I, I don't know why. People got more excited about your book than almost any other book I've worked on. I think, I think it's because we all struggle with something or we're all grateful for something. And to put it in words, to put what's in your mind and all these jumbles of thoughts that sometimes just run through our minds, to sit down and write the words, put it down, you know, on your laptop, even by hand, and then look at what makes sense. It is almost a form of meditation, I think, because it just flows freely from your heart. I know. I love, I mean, you're a, a true coach, Mila, because you're always teaching us new things. And I love how you teach us this concept of stacking, right? Like mm -hmm. we can increase our volumes. I think we're, we have it in our minds to um, release, you know, volume two, volume three, and also maybe even do different editions, like one for teens, you know, one for youth voices. Yes. So, yes. So women, divorcees, you can do divorced women. I mean, divorce, you know, you can do all kinds of things. The choirs. I mean, you can do anything. Teachers. You could do it with chicken soup for the soul. But I also think, uh, just uh, thinking about it, don't change your format right now because what you have, what, 25, 30 people in the book now. Well, like someone reminded me the other day, we got 9 billion people on the planet or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the real number. So you have many people who could be in it. I think, it, I think you should keep going with this concept and this idea and... Uh, because you have something unique. I haven't seen a lot of letters, dear so-and-so. In fact, I did one years ago with a kid's class I was teaching. I've been doing anthologies for centuries, well, a few decades, because there's these kids I had in the class, and we were reading Peter Rabbit. So we wrote letters to anyone who was in Peter Rabbit. Dear Peter Rabbit, dear Mr. McGregor, why did you try to kill the rabbit? We're upset about that, you know. So I've, I've, I did, a, that was 30 years ago when I did that book. So I think letters are unique and, and are your signature. And I totally agree with, yeah, I totally agree with Irma, exactly. It's personal, it was meditative, and I think it was also very, very healing for some people too. You know, be, to be able to confront those and to give um, qualities, right, to these intangible things. Yes, yes, and I think that book is gonna inspire and help a lot of people because then they find out that they're not the only one going through tragedy, not going through many problems. In fact, I think we had more letters to money than anything else, right? <laughs> that that was cute. But but it's you know, and but the main thing is I'm I'm inspiring people. I'm the permission giver. Write your short book, the 36 page book, and then expand it and use it as the outline for the longer book. And then make that an even longer book. So I'm giving permission to people to just write it, just publish it, let's go. I would say please get it edited because we don't want more bad books. But I I really, uh, giving people permission to write those books, blather it on the page. You know, Barbara Kingsolver says, give yourself permission to write a bad book and then work on it until it's a good book. And so what she means is don't hesitate, just write it, don't hide behind editing or research just get the new writing out there and fix it later and that way you'll have a book and anybody can write a 36 page book in a day or two and get it edited and get it up on amazon in a week or two it's it's and then your book you know i know a lot of people right now who aren't even trying to sell their books they're writing them to show expertise and to teach from and some people are making a huge amount of money by just having that little book in their hand as their calling card. 
I think it is like a calling card. But there is a very important question I want to ask you, Mila, and I want to get your opinion on it. I went on Twitter the other day and people were talking about the Z library and how they work is being stolen. What do you suggest? What do we do as, as writers and authors? About copywriting? Are you talking about copywriting? So what happens is people take their books and they put it on this website and then they're selling the books, they taking the money. So the authors are the ones who are losing and they in effect, they change. So they say they the ones who wrote the books. Oh, you mean plagiarism and robbery. Well, you know, that does happen a lot, especially in some other countries. And uh, that will happen. In fact, some people look at compliment. Oh my gosh, they love my work. And now as they're putting it out, you do want to make your own money off your own book for sure. And do you know, um, a lot of people don't copyright their book, but did you know that as soon as you start typing on the computer, your book is copyrighted yes. and you'll have the proof because you have the date signature there and everything. But I, I don't know. I don't see a lot of that happening. Have you, have you seen a lot of that happening? I, I haven't heard a lot about that happening. No, I actually took a snapshot on Twitter and there were quite a number of people who commented on that mm. where they went to check their work and their work was there as well. And I do agree with you. I think if someone wants to take my work, it's a compliment because that means that they think that my work is good. Yeah, I mean, so, we don't want them to steal it and then sell it and we don't make the money, but still I, I don't hear a lot of that happening actually so i don't know i think that's where you know book publishing services and book coaches and editors can come in right to help with that uh-huh uh -huh. yeah and watch out for what you know paying a lot of money to services because i have a few clients who who paid you know a lot of money for someone to help them with their book and then they never really made the money back and they're going oh my god i'm learning more from you than i learned from that so you it, I'm trying to make everything affordable what I could afford. That's what I'm doing. I mean, I, I, I don't. I think you know. Actually, you could do it all for free. But if you need some coaching, I don't believe we should charge an arm and a leg. You know. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, Cinderella monologues, right? Because I was amazed that you offered it for that much before yeah. you started being a book compilation. Because I've, I've had experience where it was like a thousand dollars and up. But to your point, you know, this is something that you found was reasonable that you could afford that you could also, you know, help other aspiring writers and authors too. But yeah, I was I would seven with what I could pay. So that's why I put it on there. And and then but I, I mean, I just got one from a woman I, I love that's one of my mentors and it's seven thousand dollars and you get two thousand words, you know, so it's like I, I'm giving two thousand to five thousand words and I'm so excited that the people we're having, the stories we're coming in are so amazing. And I'm going to make it a totally professional book. It's going to be very professional looking and lovely to be with. And, and Olivia has offered to interview each writer. Thank you, Olivia. That's fantastic. And Olivia is in the book too. So that's going to be great. I just couldn't pass it up. I mean, you were just giving such incredible value. Like I was astounded. I said, Mila, how's this possible? I mean, you get your author page, you get personal coaching, you get the book editing services, you get copies of the book, <laughs> you know, the proof copies, your 10 copies, um, you get the live stream interviews, you get 5,000 words. I mean, that is an, uh, like so valuable because most book compilations, you know, give you like maybe a thousand, maybe even less, 750 to a thousand. So yeah, me, Irma, there's still time. So you two can get in. <laughs> I want in, Mila. Don't forget about me. Oh, I want your story, man. Your story from growing up in um, in Africa. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That's so amazing. And, you know, I have one woman. She's wonderful. She's um, She she came from Vietnam, one of the boat people. And she has a great story about pirates boarding the ship. And, I mean, there's just some really, really good story here. And I'm excited because, you know, I was a real Cinderella. I grew up in a very poor situation where we went to bed without dinner. We, I went to school without lunch 
And I ended up marrying a farmer. I don't want people to feel sorry for me, but I want them to look around their own neighborhood and look for those kids who maybe don't have enough food and maybe grow a, a row for the food bank. Uh, you know, that's another thing. Have you heard of that program, Grow a Road for the Food Bank? And that means just giving a portion of everything you grow. And so I was, and I had to do all the housework. And then I had to do all the work and certain jobs I took on. I would be the one. I don't know why. I was always the Cinderella. But, you know, it made me strong. It made me who I am today. And I was writing my own um, memoir. It's it's actually written, the, mem the Cinderella monologues. But then I realized the monologues should be stories like Jack Canfield. I'm not thinking compilation books. I'm thinking more like storybooks like Jack Canfield. Like I put together with my classes in the past. And so I now I'm calling my memoir Cinderella Interrupted. And then I'm sharing Cinderella monologues with all kinds of women. I'm so excited. And, and Olivia's helped me with that idea. We're going to take it further and do Cinderella monologues for different groups. So, so you know, it, and, it's, and there's, here's something for you to know. Please don't use this against me. But <laughs> titles can't be copyrighted. And so I thought the Cinderella monologues, I'm sure someone's thought of that. So about five years ago when I was starting it or eight years ago, I looked online and there was no Cinderella monologue. So I went and made a Facebook and a Twitter and a LinkedIn and and to preserve it. Because now when people look up the Cinderella monologues, they're gonna find me all over the internet. So I I that's one of my tricks I teach people is once you find a title you like, make a Facebook um, community page and business page. And then um, but also there's something else you need to know. Titles cannot be copyrighted. So if someone else has your title, you can still use it. it because a lot of people do. That's, uh, you know, my one friend wanted to call her book Heartwood. And there were 20 books called Heartwood. So I said, well, let's let's look at it, Heartwood, two words. And we did, and there were only five. So she switched it. But still, you know what I mean? It's Those are little tricks and things that most people don't realize. That is very interesting, Mila. And... I'm sure that everyone else watching is learning along with us. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge because it can just make all of us more excited to engage and to start writing. Yes, let's all be authors. You know what? We need your story. We need your inspiration. The world is waiting for you. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, I'm excited for this project. I mean, like at, at first it seemed daunting, like 5,000 words, what could I possibly say? But, you know, it's truly when you sit down to think about it, um, you know, 5,000 words is just the right amount to, to show all the nuances and the development and the journey that us women have come through, right? To get to where we are today. Exactly, I want people to show where they came from and how they got to where they are today to show other women that they can do that. You know, when, when the first talk shows first came out, you know, Geraldo and Don, Donahue and, and Oprah, a lot of women didn't know that they weren't the only one who had been, you know, for instance, molested or, or divorced. And when they found out that other it had happened to thousands of other women and other people, they felt better. They were like, oh, I'm not the only one. It's not my fault. You know, so I think that all of our stories are so important to tell everyone because if I grew up with no dinner and lunch, and you know, often I'll tell my story to someone and they say, oh, maybe my childhood wasn't so bad, you know? And, and or they'll say, uh, you know, so, so it's like we give perspective that you're not the only one that is going through this. I think the letters did that for us and that to inspire people that no matter where they come from, they can become anything. No matter where you've come from, you can be anything. That's my whole premise and how I end every talk I ever say, because I want people to know that I came from, oh my gosh, the very bottom. And because I had my grandmother, I was lucky to have my grandmother who was very famous and had taught Eleanor Roosevelt to speak. And she drugged me along with her in her early 90s when she spoke several times with Gloria Steinem and Marla Thomas and Jane Fonda. But anyway, she she's the one who helped me really become who I am today. You know, I'm emulating her. I've become her. I wasn't going to become her. I, I have become my grandmother. I'm very pointed. I speak out against GMO and um, pesticides, try to protect our children. 
And I think if she was here now, she would take that on too as well. So, you know. That's amazing. So, Mia, you mentioned that after you wrote the book about what your grandmother mother had gone through, you wrote about dogs, training dogs, because you needed to change up just the the way the book was, you know, the, the atmosphere that really gets created when you write a book. What other kinds of books have you written? Well, you know, my first few books were traditionally published, two of them. Uh, one of them was called 101 um, Theater Games. And that book went all over the world and became a textbook for theater companies, for colleges to teach you know, teachers how to teach kids. And another book, 50 Scenes to Go, which were uh, a compilation of all of the scenes that came out of um, my 22 plays and musicals that circled the globe before COVID. I'm kind of a prolific writer. I keep writing. I'm, I'm putting out, uh, well, here's another great thing about being in, um, in uh, collaboration books, you know, um, anthologies, is that usually you still own the material. So I was in uh, Sherry Murr's book and I am taking my part, which was my journey from poverty to abundance, and I'm putting it in a very short book on Amazon. So what I want to teach and encourage everyone who's going to be in my anthology, The Cinderella Monologues, is to take that and make a shorter book later and I'll even help them do it. I really want to see that you know, the more books you have on Amazon, the more you build your algorithms and the more you sell. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking every one of the ones that I've done in an anthology and making my own book afterwards. Probably not with the letters because it was short, but other other books. And I'm in several anthologies right now, and I'm very excited about that. So, so another question I have, sorry, Olivia, is I... I've published four books in a very difficult genre for youth. And then I changed and I started writing an adventure book for you, okay. which the words just flow. Have you found the same that sometimes it's so hard, you struggle, but you know that it has to be published. It's got to get out there. And other times your words just flow. It's like this fire hose. Have you found that? Yes, I have. And, you know, I just wrote a novel in that wonderful program, um, Rymo Na Nano. It's like Nano Rymo in November. Nano Rymo. Yeah, I always get mixed up with that. Anyway, I did it with Sherry, Sherry Mers. We were partners. We were accountability partners. And because I've been teaching how to write the short book, and we always start with a bullet list, which I call an outline. I've never outlined. I've always been a pantser. So you're either an outliner or a pantser or both. I've always been a pantser, fly by the seat of my pants. Let's start writing and see where it goes. And because I've been teaching how to write the short book, I've written two or three books in that class of my own because during the 20 minute writing prompts. And, and so I became an outliner partially. And so when we wrote our books, which are novels, kind of adventure novels, like you say, Irma, I had outlined it because I knew where it was going and I couldn't believe it. I outlined it to the very end. So the thing I wrote first was the last chapter. It And that book flowed straight out of me onto the page, never could stop. Now I'm editing it and, and trying to polish it and clean it. And that's a lot more work in a way. So I understand what you're saying, Irma, because I got real, real fast. And it just came on the page because I knew what I was doing. I kind of actually wrote it about two young men I knew when I was young and went to them or anyone in the book. It was just their personalities and the book flowed onto the page. So I know what you're saying. And then also, you know, there's choices of writing. Right now, Chatty is really in. Writing in first person. I did this, I did that. And writing Chatty, people are just wanting your story. And, and if you write Chatty, it's a lot easier and you make a lot less mistakes than if you write in third person. So, uh, and, and you don't have to write chatty. I have one woman who's writing more of a clinical book. So she's going to make it a little more professional. So I give people choices. Think about, you know, the way I teach them if they want to write in first or third person is we write our bios first. 
because you have to have your bio for every talk you make. And the secret to that is you don't have to have a book before you start speaking because you already know your material. But if you have your bios ready, every single podcast or summit you're on, they're going to want your short bio. Most people want your first person bio, no, third person bio, as if it was a newspaper article. Mila Johansson is a writing and publishing coach, you know, and then, but then, then I have people rewrite their bio into, I am a writing and publishing coach, and I also teach public speaking. So that way I can, I let people decide what seems easier for them to write in for their book. A novel, it could be first person from a character's point of view, or it could be in third person, like we read a lot of novels are. So, but if you're writing a expertise book, people want to hear your story and you're probably going to write more in first person. I experienced hiring my first staff when I was whatever, you know, on, on and on. So those, those are just, you know, there's a lot to it. We're, we're just kind of skimming the layers here, right? <laughs> It's awesome. And I just always um, marvel at how you are so logical in your thinking with your stacking method, right? Like taking our chapters and making something from that, a short book and stacking that to a longer book. I think you're really the first book coach that I've had that talks about stacking in that way and, you know, repurposing and retelling the story. There, there's a reason for that is if I was sitting at home, you'd see this whole, you've seen it before, both of you, the bookshelf behind me of my 22 plays and musicals. I would write them into long versions for our theater company to do. We did each one like probably three times over the years I worked there. But I realized other schools and theater companies didn't have the rehearsal time that we had. So I wrote them into medium and short. I did this 30 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. So I have invented the modular book format, I'm pretty sure, because of doing that. So, what, so with my grandmother's book, which is 300 pages, I'm actually going backwards. I'm going to take that book and make it into five shorter books of the five segments of her life, Colorado Cattle Ranch, putting together Pulitzer School of Journalism, speak, uh, being the first woman lobbyist of the Capitol, you know, and on and on. So then that will turn into five books. And what I'm helping people do is look at the material they already have. Like some people, one woman I know had 500 blogs and beautifully written. I said, hey, you've got five books there. Let's make five books out of those. We'll do the same cover with a different shade of color on each one. So, you know, there, there's there's a lot of ideas out there. Let's say you're a podcaster and you have your uh, your the words all printed from the podcast. Those could become books with editing. Oh, fantastic. And something I always love hearing you say is that um, we can write these stories so that our children can know that we were young once. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I want everyone to write their memoir because I think our children need to know that we were young. <laughs> and I don't think we're going to know unless we write these memoirs. So I'm going to start a memoir class pretty soon because I really, I've been writing memoirs and I love it. And I, my grandmother, even my grandmother, you guys, I, I was ra half raised by her. I love her. I was always with her. But she was an older woman who wore a lot of jewelry, who smelled a little funny, because you know when you're older that they don't want to take showers because they might slip. So anyway, I I didn't realize until I got into her memoir that was in this file cabinet that was sent to me when she passed away that she had been so young and youthful. She was the Amy Goodman of her time. She was ahead of her time. She she was the first woman lobbyist at the Capitol. She's the one who helped get us the right to vote. She 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 was a pioneer. She wrote the first book about public speaking for women that raged all over the country. She would speak in front of 200, 2,000 people as she toured the whole entire country. I am so jealous of that. I would love to do that. Of course, people didn't have TV back then, but but she was so young and I didn't know that. So I put her picture of a young woman on the cover in three different shades doing an Andy Warhol thing to bring her into the modern age. Beautiful, Mila. So beautiful. So I hope you all watching this are enjoying the knowledge and wisdom that Mila brings and her passion, right, to help you get your message out, your voice and your story onto paper. Um, I want to sh sh switch gears a little bit and just take you to Mila's website because there's so much to cover. And so I'm going to share the screen and show you 
Neela's website, and maybe Neela, you can talk us through it. Um, some of the programs that you're offering, in addition to Cinderella Monologues, I know you're doing a lot of laser coaching and speaking and how that may help someone's career. Um, so let me go ahead and share screen. One moment here. All right, let's see, share screen. All right, because there's so much on this website, okay. <laughs> All right, so here we are on milajohansen.com. Um, so right away, the big project is the Cinderella story. So you can click here and this will take you to all the benefits that you can gain just from doing this book anthology and reserve your space and you know share your ideas with Mila, talk it out with her, brainstorm what your chapter may be. Hint, hint, Irma, <laughs> to go do that, okay? And then, okay. um, <laughs> Yay. and then we also have, oops, let me stop this part and get back to the main one. Let's see, this main website here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so when you scroll down a little bit further, um, talk to us a little bit about, you know, some of these new things that you've got going on with the laser coaching and um, for speaking. Yeah, I'm doing two That's kinds cool. of laser coaching. I'm, I'm um, doing th well, three kinds, really. I'm, I'm helping people write, finish their books, and publish their books, wherever they are. I'll help you write in the very middle. And I'm, laser coaching is cool because you can um, contact me as many times as you want for a half hour at a time. And once you do the next assignment, I have one woman. She's just great. She's doing every single assignment I give her and coming right back. What's the next one? You know, what's the next one? And and then I'm doing the same thing with speaking because I'm realizing most people don't have the right camera. They don't know the protocol and they don't know where to get the gigs. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of that. If you click into that, you'll see how many things are offered in, in that program. But then some people are wanting to do both. So... I'm just helping them wherever they are. They sign up for three months, six months, a year, and I'll help them write their book, publish their book, uh, speak about their book. And maybe I'm really encouraging people to start speaking about their book before it's finished to build hype and because you already know your your expertise. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing all three. So there's three. I mean, actually, most people I'm speaking with need both. They need the writing and the speaking. And they need to know where to get gigs. You know, I'm speaking once or twice a week for the last two years on podcasts and summits. And I have a lot of resources. And there's a lot of podcasters looking for you and your story and your expertise. And there's a lot of places on Facebook that say, hey, we're looking for mothers who have homeschooled their kids or whatever. You know, and that's one of my new subjects. I've been, I homeschooled my daughter through eighth grade. And we just did things. We never sat very long. We went out and did things. So I'm trying to train parents, don't sit and make your kid hate you too much. Go out and do real things. Like my daughter had a magazine and she had about 15 people we knew subscribe to it. You know, so there's there's all kinds of, of things to be speaking about. You need a speaking list. I see you can speak about, you know, let's say three things you could speak about, maybe five. And one would be your book, one would be your business, one would be maybe you coach something. You know, um, I, I know both of you could speak about three or four things right off the bat. So, and, and then I also have my Write Your Short Book in a Day, which is happens every four months, every three months, uh, four times a year. And the next one is on September 10th, Saturday, September 10th. Sign up now because it's wonderful. Olivia's been there a few times and you get so much done. We, we write together. I've written two or three, I've, I've written three books, but I've published two. And it's just a great time for um, new writers or people who already have a manuscript and want to get some work. I have several people who come every, every single time to keep working on their MS, their manuscript. That is so interesting. And you know, Mila, everyone on this earth, like you said, there are about seven and a half billion people. And everyone has a story. 
they yeah. have stories of strife, of challenges, and then they have stories of fun, happiness, and how things happened for them. If we could close with something profound from you, could you give us to take away and to ponder and to really think about it? Can you give us something? I think I always like to end with what Oprah says, which is something my grandmother did. She, Oprah says, we have to reinvent ourselves until the end. My grandmother had a career till she was 94 to inspire us all. Never stop, never quit. Just keep going and keep finding new things to do. That is a beautiful way to end the sponsor spotlight. Yes. Thanks, Mila. Oh my gosh. I definitely feel like your grandmother's presence. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, I love, I, I tear up when I speak about her. Oh, thank you for saying that. I love her so much. Yes. Thank indeed. you, Mila. Thank you very much for your time, which is very precious. Oh. And for sharing with us your thoughts. We appreciate it. And thank you for being a sponsor for our summit. We are very grateful because it means that you see the same importance we see in our summits. Well, thank you. I, I'm honored. I'm honored to be speaking with you and to be your sponsor. Thank you so much. So with that being said, um, this concludes our sponsor spotlight. Please go and register for the summit today. The link is below here for you. So singyourheartsongsummit.com. It's right around the corner. So you want to make sure that you reserve your spot. And uh, you've gotten a brief introduction. This is very brief, by the way. <laughs> so this is a very brief introduction to Mila. And, um, you know, you'll be hearing a lot more from her during the summit. And we also have lots of different surprises up our sleeves. But you have to be at the summit to find out what those surprises are. You know, there can be some special packages, some special bonus offers from our sponsor, Mila. Um, so you really want to tune in and be present for all of that. We can't tell you what it is now, but it's going to be huge. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And so um, please connect with Mila soon here on LinkedIn. She's available for you. And also check out the Facebook group, Pen to Publish. So that is available for you as well. And then, of course, MilaJHanson.com, where you can find all of the amazing programs and coaching services that she offers for, for your speaking, for your writing, <laughs> and your editing. So please go ahead and connect with Mila today. Thank you so much, Mila. Thank you. Thank you, Mila. We love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Woo! All right, Irma. Fantastic. <laughs> wow. I love our sponsors. I love our speakers. Like this summit is really coming together. Yes, I think so too. I am, you know what? You did so much work. I am really, are we still recording? Yes, we are. <laughs> But thank you, Irma. <laughs> it is a team effort. And, you know, we all can um, leverage our unique strengths. <laughs> but I appreciate that. <laughs> awesome. So I will see you for the next speaker spotlight. I think we've got two more weeks. Yes, we've got two more weeks to wrap up to cover all of our speakers. And then it's going to be our final push for uh, summit registration. So stay tuned, everyone. There's more to come. And Thank you for being a part of this series. Um, so this is not the end for Irma and I, <laughs> or Steph. <laughs> nope. It is not the end. We still have a few of our speakers who we want to have the spotlights with. They are all very talented. And I would suggest, once again, to make a point and just browse through our YouTube channel and sing your heart song summit. And just have a look at these speakers and presenters and what they have to offer. And you might be surprised. You might find something that really connects with you. Indeed, indeed. All right. Well, have a fantastic day, Irma. Thank you to all of you for watching. If you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay, share in the conversation. Let us know your thoughts and comments and we'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Have a great day, Olivia. Bye, Irma. <laughs>